Hey guys, welcome back. My name's LT, and on this channel, we build custom and high-performance trucks. And if either of those things appeal to you, which, I mean, come on, who don't they appeal to? Help me out and hit that subscribe button. Now, even though 2021 did just kick off, we have a goal to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And I know we can make it happen. I'm just gonna need your help. So click that little red button down in the corner. Now, as you might've seen before, this right here is Ugly Truck. It's a 2000 Silverado extended cab. And we swapped in an 8.1 under the hood. And then for good measure, we added an S480 turbocharger. Now, we did take it out for its maiden voyage on the very last upload. So check out that video if you haven't already, because it was a blast. But I learned a couple of things on that test drive, which I'm going to have to address. And they're really not major surprises. They're just things I kind of hadn't got around to yet. Lesson number one has to do with the gauges. Now, I showed you the install of these three gauges. We have down below a boost gauge, fuel pressure, and then a wide band. The top gauge, the wide band, um, it's just way too close to the driver. You have to shift your focus quite a bit to go from the road to the wide band and then back to the road. These two, they're not so bad. But I think what I'm going to do is, because I'm not crazy about this pillar pod in the first place, I'm going to swap it out for an auto meter dual pillar pod. And then I'm going to take the wide band and I'm going to stick it down in a little pod either here on the dashboard or, <clears throat> or maybe just screw it to the side of that one. And just make it a little bit easier to see everything. Lesson number two, we're going to need a bigger fuel pump. And again, I knew that going in and I think I mentioned that a couple times already. Right now it's got the stock pump in the tank and it works pretty good up until about four, maybe five pounds of boost. And then the fuel pressure just starts to drop off. And that's prevented me from doing any really crazy wide open throttle pulls or tuning. So today we're gonna to be installing a Walbro 450. Lesson number three, traction problems. This truck, it spins the tires fairly easily. And yes, it is a turbo big block with 430 gears in the back with a Detroit True Track, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's like the most powerful thing in the world because it has a lot of stuff going against it in terms of you know, hooking up and getting traction. And the biggest thing is actually the tires. These wheels and tires I bought from a 2014 Silverado and I love how they look and the tire size is actually not too bad. It's a 265, 65, 18. But the tires, these are actually original 2014 tires. The date code right there, ninth week of 2014. So they're old, they're hard as a rock, they're a little bit dry rotted and they just don't have that much traction. So at some point, I'm gonna be swapping those out. But in the meantime, it's just fun to spool the thing up and spin the tires and you know feel like a drifter or whatever. So anyway, fuel pump is the name of the game today, so let me show you what I've got. When it comes to in-tank fuel pumps, Walbro is kind of like the go-to name, and this is one of their 450s. I think there are two different versions, a high pressure and a little bit higher pressure version. I think this is the higher pressure version, but that's the part number right there, made by Walbro. Um, and it also comes with, or rather you have an optional install kit. It comes with a filter sock thingy, a short section of line, and an unterminated in-tank harness. Now, I am not going to be using the harness in the tank because I hate making electrical connections around fuel. And I'm not using that because I'm pretty sure it's going to be too short. So the only thing I really need is the filter sock. For the rest of the stuff, I went to Racetronics. I grabbed a much longer section of flexible fuel hose and one of their short terminated heavy-duty in-tank harnesses. Now, this has a much thicker wire than stock. That's their little uh, part number right there. One end plugs directly into the end of the fuel pump. And the other end plugs into this little bulkhead connector that's going to pass through the top of the fuel tank. Now, anytime when you're installing a big pump into a tank, it's going to be drawing a lot of current or a lot more current than the stock wiring and relay can handle. So also along with the fuel pump accessories, I grabbed a hot wire kit. Now, this is going to provide battery power directly from either the alternator or the battery, I think. And it's got a heavy duty relay and it plugs into all of your existing connections so you don't need to do any splicing. That's the part number right there for this one. Uh, so to get to the fuel pump to install all this stuff, we've got to get to the tank, which means we got a couple different options. Number one, you can get the Sawzall or the cutoff wheel and cut a big giant hole in the top of your bed. Guess what? We're not doing that. No surprise there. So that leaves us with the option of pulling the bed or dropping the tank. I don't really want to drop the tank because in my opinion, it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt and I don't have a two post lift. and It's kind of a difficult truck to work underneath being a little bit lower. So. The option I'm going with is removing the bed.
put it under here. Yep, and then go back that way. No, that way. And then put it on that hook in the corner. Perfect. And I'll come on back. Got it. Not quite enough. Hold on. Ooh, a few. Can't pull it. Now look, this is all loose, see? Wiggle it so everyone can see. Good job, now get your hand out of there. So the new Walboro pump is not a direct drop-in replacement, and I kind of knew that going in, but there's two real reasons. Number one, the pump is physically a little bit bigger than the stock pump, and number two, the stock pump actually has two suction lines on it. One of them connects right here to the bottom of the tank, and the other one connects to this guy right here, which actually sucks fuel from inside this reservoir. And that way, if the truck is running low on fuel, say below this level here, this reservoir is always going to hold fuel in it and the tank or the pump will always be submerged and you won't lose any fuel pressure until you're totally out of fuel. Now there are two different ways we can work around that. Number one, we can take the filter sock that comes with the Walboro pump. Uh, we just kind of jam it on the bottom of the pump like that and fold it up and stick it down there in the bucket. Now I have heard or have read that people who have done that, they have fuel suction issues once you get to below the level of the fuel bucket because there's no way for that bucket then to fill itself with fuel like there is with the stock setup. So the way that we're gonna try it is I'm gonna modify the bottom of the bucket here, take the stock filter sock off, basically cut a hole in here, past the bottom of the pump, just kind of barely through it. And then that way, the new filter sock will be kind of sitting 
right where that one is there. And hopefully that'll keep our fuel pump always picking up fuel unless we're like really, really low on fuel and we're accelerating. The fuel obviously sloshes away from the pickup in the tank. Now, if that doesn't work, there's a couple different options, but they're pretty expensive. Either some custom like aeromotive drop-in modules or just converting to like a fuel cell. And I don't really want to do either of those right now, but if this doesn't work out in the long run, that's what we're going to have to do. But I'm willing to give it a shot, so let's keep going. You're gonna to have to get a little bit creative with however you choose to attach the fuel pump down into the mounting bracket. And I thought about using zip ties, but I was a little bit unsure if whatever plastic the zip ties are made from would last submerged in a fuel tank for any amount of time. So instead I just used steel safety wire. It's a real big pain in the butt to work with. It took me about 30 minutes to get everything lined up and installed down there. But once it was in, you know, that pump's not going anywhere and I'm really happy with how it's all turned out. Uh, the one thing I'm not happy about is having to give up the functionality of the stock fuel bucket or the reservoir, but we'll just have to keep an eye on the fuel pressure gauge when we're doing a pull. And worst case scenario, you know, maybe we won't be able to go below a quarter of a tank of fuel or anything like that. But anyway, 
The whole assembly is done. We've got the pickup sucking right from the bottom of the tank. The stock fuel float is reinstalled. I had to repin it into the new connector. I've got the heavy duty wiring running down to the pump and the heavy duty bulkhead connector that Racetronic sent over. So basically this pump hanger assembly is ready to go back into the tank. So I'll drop it in. I'll plug the stock wiring in just for a second just to give it a quick pressure test to make sure everything's working. And then we'll move on to the wiring. Alrighty guys, our installation for the day is complete. The truck is running and there are two things that we're gonna check out. First of all, we wanna make sure there are no fuel leaks because obviously anytime you work with a fuel system, there's a risk of damaging an O-ring or something like that. Pretty minimal usually, but it's always worth your while just to kind of double check and make sure no fuel is spraying out where it's not supposed to be. And we're good to go. Got the wiring all kind of routed away, the hot wire kit is in. And the next thing that we need to make sure of is fuel pressure. Because remember, anytime you install an increased capacity electric fuel pump, there's a risk that the stock regulator and lines just aren't gonna be big enough to return all that excess volume back to the tank at idle because you have really no demand at idle. All the de fuel demand is at wide open throttle. Before with the stock pump, this truck idled somewhere around 50, 49, 50 PSI. And right now, yeah, it is just a tiny bit higher. We're at, uh, looks like just a touch over 61. Um, but I think that's at least in the ballpark. I mean, I might have to adjust the tune just a little bit in the idle areas to shorten the pulse width of the injectors. But like I said, we're in the ballpark. Technically, we probably should put an aftermarket regulator on, bigger fuel lines and stuff like that. But for now, we're just gonna send it and see what happens. Now this is, uh, let's see, it's about five o'clock on a Friday, so my work week is just coming to a close. I still gotta get this video edited and posted for you guys, probably on Sunday morning is when you'll be watching this. But I gotta say thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I have got to get the bed back on Ugly Truck and get it ready for next week because we're gonna take it back out on the road, do a little bit more tuning, and maybe we'll just do a big old smoky burnout. Catch you next week, guys.